starting out today, we're in the bathroom and I'm getting ready to put holes in the wall to mount the faucet. So I'm thinking right about 37 and a half inches feels like a good height to have the faucet at. When I stand up, that seems like where I'd be reaching for it. So we're gonna have this faucet sitting about there. So it's more towards the left than the right because the right is the shower basin. I've already went ahead and mounted the faucet up there into a, a stud. So right about here is where that's gonna go. So I need to get my marker out real quick, mark the center of the two holes, and we'll get the holes drilled for where it's gonna go into the wall at. Now you can see it right there are my two marks. So that's gonna be the centers of where it's gonna hook up to the wall and thread in. So those will sit there. And what we've got is these are gonna go through. So this is gonna be the faucet and it's gonna be sticking up. These will be going through the wall and hook it on the back side. Then the piece that they hook into, I'll show you in a minute, but it's gonna to hook to a piece of plywood. It's gonna span that gap. Go ahead. Line up our second one. Right about there. So these are what those get mounted to. So this is gonna get hooked to a piece of ply that I put behind the wall. And obviously clocked, you know, to match. We'll crimp the pecs down, that'll be my drop. And this is how it's gonna hang from the walls from the three screws on each of those. So I've got some scrap ply outside. I'm gonna go get that cut down to be the right size to span the gap between the studs. And we'll get these mounted up to it. And it should be I'm probably gonna crimp the pecs before I go too far now that I think about it, but yeah. And we should be able to come back through and mount the faucet on the front side. So we got these now. Which, hmm, that's going to be a bit of an issue. These things are going to be way too tall to fit over there. So I probably am going to run these and trim them down some because I want to have these against the wall. Ideally, I'll have them sitting about flush with the tile, so you're not going to see the back if I go through and cut these. So I'm probably going to go to the cutoff wheel, cut these down by about half, and then. Looks like I need to do just a little bit of angling on these, which these are adjustable. I can move them a little bit to get them lined up. Fossil be ready to mount. As with pretty much everything in this project, a little bit of modifications needed. So this is the factory piece that goes up against the wall to hide the hole where the faucet comes through. It's way too thick for my needs though, so we're cutting them down on the flap disc to be a lot thinner now. This one's about right. I gotta go through and get the edge straightened out now because I've test fit it and it's pretty much where I need it. But you're not going to see this. The tile should be about flush with this when I'm done. But I need it to be thinner so I have room to actually mount the faucet. There we go. It's mounted. Now, if you're looking here, you can see what I was saying. How these had to get trimmed down so this could sit. Because this is pushing all the way against these and that's how close they are to the wall. Now, when tile goes on, it'll be pretty much flush with these. So, they won't be sticking out any. They'll just blend in. You'll just have this, you know, color matched ring right around where the faucet goes doing some work in the bathroom right now and this is probably a little blurry a little hazy i actually shattered the lens on my camera so the outer protective layer is missing right now so this is about the best i can get it but i figured you guys would still want to see the progress i'm making because it's a rain day and i'm going to keep working so i've got the bottom piece cut this is going to be the same material it's going to run all the way up the wall and curve the ceiling to the door so i'm working on getting the next piece in but obviously i got to cover that part of the wall so what i did is i took two by cut it down to fit up in there i notched for the top and then this is a angled piece all the way down to kind of keep that contour so i'll have a solid piece to be able to hook to all the way through here so i can get the next piece cut and screwed in now i need to figure out what i'm going to do over here i'm probably just going to cut a piece of scrap and screw it to the wall right there so i have something to attach to on that side as well because the next piece will only go part way up this and then have to meet another one so I have to get something put in over there. Not as big of a deal over there though, because this is just foam. So I can just push a piece in there and hook it down. Got the next one in. Got it cut 
pretty close, but I'm gonna wait till it's completely finished. I'm gonna come through with the flap disc on the bottom. We'll flatten that out. There is gonna be a window sill, so this will be tucked under there. And then we'll get the uh, cutoff wheel back on there and just come straight down the edge here, or possibly even just use the flap disc and flatten it out to this piece of wood. Once we get that done, we'll come back through and we're done. Get a little piece of finished ply or something and we'll finish out the edge here. We're getting closer. It's ready for the next piece to go up on the top right now. Need a little more work done right here. We've got the hallway side of the wall to the bathroom sheeted. Still need to come through now and sheet this side of the wall. Once we get that done though, we can continue the ceiling on both sides up to that wall because I really want the wall to be up before we get the ceiling up there. Because this wall should be going just a little bit above where the ceiling ends into it. So without having that in already, it'd be pretty difficult to get the wall bent up and shoved up in there. Got a good piece of scrap here that's going to be big enough to make a panel to go above the refrigerator. We never did the inside of that wall. Now the panel's going to be removed and switches and stuff are going to be going through there. But since I got a good piece of scrap here right now, it's pretty close to what I'm going to end up needing. We're going to go ahead and cut it. And then we'll use this so we don't have a lot of waste out of it. That's going to work perfect right there. Put a couple screws in it because this is not a permanent install. We'll have to take this back out to run switches, but it'll be good enough for right now. All right, so we have the ceiling now ran all the way up to that shelf, all the way down. Still got to do a little bit more work where the two sheets tie together over there, but that's not a big deal. All right, we're taking a break from everything else on the inside of the bus right now to do a project that I've been procrastinating on for a while, but really just need to get it done. So this is a new black tank. I am going with a smaller black tank on my bus, but I am separating black and gray. So this is a 44 gallon. And uh, I'll build a frame for it real quick, get everything kind of ready so that we can get the other one out, get this one put in there, and then I can do measurements to figure out where and how the gray tanks get them out. But this one's narrower, so that's going to leave me more room down the center of the bus for my batteries. Plus, I trust this one more than the one that came in the bus. Okay, well, I got a frame started around it. But where the drain is, I can't continue the frame through here. So what I'm going to do is flip it over and put a board across the top to connect these two and hold those down. So I figured, well, I've got the tank out. We're going to go ahead and give the bay a good cleaning wash it all out. So I don't plan on coming back in here for a while and I really want to get insulation down under the tank before we put it in. So just come through with the hose, clean it all out before we get everything put back in here. All right so we got the tank in. I'm just test fitting it right now so I can figure out where I got to start putting the flange to hook up to the toilet and all that stuff to it. And where I got it sitting right now, my diesel heater will go back in place in the same spot. So, we'll see how I like that and see if I'm going to end up changing it or leave it like that. Another thing we're going to go ahead and do while we're installing this is Jerry sent me some of these electronic valves. So, you can run them manually if you want to. Or turn that over. And now, this is an electronically controlled dump valve. So, I've got a pair of them. One for my black tank and one for my gray. Okay, well we got the hole in the top, so we can put the drop in from the toilet up there, but uh, my PVC glue dried. So that means for the third time today, I'm going to head out to the hardware store. Primer's still good, but glue dried up, so we're going to get that done, we'll get the drop in. Um, the floor still isn't dried up enough for me to put insulation down, so I put the tank in, we'll get it mounted for now. But there is clearance underneath of it, I will be able to get the insulation under, so I'm not too concerned about that right now. I also just had to order the adapter to go on this valve for the hoses to drain the black tank. Not a big deal. They'll be here in a couple days. Uh, it'll obviously be sealed and functional until then. I'll just have to get that glued on so that we can, you know, drain it. All right, so I got a little more stuff to then while I'm waiting for this to dry up. I still need to go run the vent tube out of the top, but that's not a big deal. So from here over on top of that is where I'm gonna get a gray tank to fit into. Um, not much I need to worry about there, except where my shower drop is. Everything else is coming from the front of the bay, so if I get a tank that fits in there pretty good, should be good to go. So that gap on the wall right there is where the inverter is going to go. 
There's my breaker box. Water heater's over here. Now, the reason I mounted it there is so that the overpressure valve on top can go out into that angled run behind the mini split. So if the water heater ever overpressurizes and that pop-off goes, then it's going under the bus and it's not filling this with water or steam. Batteries are going down the center and I have tons of room on this side to continue and put more batteries. I'm trying to make sure that when I build this, I'm building this to a point where it can expand as I grow. Uh, inverter might be an issue. Uh, if I have to end up swapping or going to two inverters or something, then I'll probably build a wall panel that goes this way and mount them here, but it's pretty easy to change. <clears throat> so I've got that going. Like I said, I've got more room over here. This water tank still is not permanent. I'm going to end up getting one that kind of fits in this space more efficiently. Round is not a very efficient shape for what I'm doing. But I'm trying to leave myself a lot of room in this utility bay. I want to be able to get in here and if I have a problem, make it easy to fix. Keep the batteries in line where if I have a problem, I can get to it easily. Make sure that I have good access to get to my breakers if I need to. You could access to my inverter. I want to make sure that everything about this is as user friendly as possible because I know, you know, I'm not going to kid myself. There will be problems in the future. I will have to get in here and work. So I'm trying to make sure that when I lay it out now, that everything's laid out in a way where I'm not going to be mad later. All right. So the diesel heater's back in. I've got the fuel lines and everything ran back over there to the tank. I still need to make a bracket to mount the tank, but it's going to stay over there for right now. Then, uh, I think that pretty much does it for the stuff that's in the bay right now. I'm getting excited though because I'm starting to get a lot of stuff mounted where I can go from some temporary system hookups to my more permanent setup. So I now have a pretty good visual of what kind of room I have in here for a gray tank to mount. And right there where the extension cord is going up, that is where my drop is going to be for my kitchen sink, bathroom sink. So it'll be coming right into the top there. I'm gonna have it come down a little bit though because I would like to also run a conduit up through that chase because that is going to the back of where my kitchen cabinets are. So it'd be nice to run my cabinet power up through there. That hole is plenty big uh, to be able to do both of those. Then right here is where the shower drain's gonna come in. So that'll probably end up coming right in the top of the gray tank. And I want the gray tank just to sit right up in there above this valve, somewhere in this area to fill in that space. Um, I'm going to have to figure out my fresh air vent. I'm probably going to end up having to put another hole right next to that one to allow my vent to go up. But I've got this one stubbed up so I can connect to it from there. I am going to tie both vents in together in a way that if the gray tank was to ever overfill, it'll go into this one. So the tanks would be tied together if they overfilled. But that'll tie my two vents together so I can get those ran up through the roof. For right now, it's going to be in the bay. Um, that's how the other setup was. Not a huge fan of it, especially as it gets warmer. That's not great because the bay starts to smell. But hopefully in the next couple weeks here, I'll have that ran through the roof and that won't be an issue. Well, that was a bit of a fight. That inverter's heavy. But we got it mounted. That's its home. So bay needs to dry out. I can get the insulation down in the bottom, but that's not going to be a huge deal. We'll get that in here at some point. But I'm glad. This may seem pretty random, but I needed to do this stuff before I could really take the next step. I need to get that wall sealed up in the kitchen. That wall is going to have my plumbing vent in it. I'm going to have quite a bit of electrical in there. The control for my water is going to be there. That's where my solar chargers are going to go, those two Victron ones. My battery monitoring system is going up in that area. So to get that wall finished and sealed, I need all that stuff done, but I can't do all that stuff until I had the new black tank in, until I get my gray tank, get it mounted, and <coughs> I need my hot water ran up through there so I can get it to the back of the sink, get all that stuff hooked up. There's just a bunch of little things that needed to get done before I could really finish out that wall. So I still have a few more. I got to order my tank for the gray water, but I needed to see what kind of room I had to play with. I've got a bunch of wires that are terminated down here right now. Right now, my power system for this is my Blue Eddy. So everything's running off of that inverter and solar setup. But it'd be nice to have, you know, more power to be able to actually run more than just critical systems off of it. So we're going to see about getting the battery bank hooked up to the inverter. 
get the rest of the shore power side of this wired up. I've got holes in both sides of my bus, so I think what I'm gonna do is turn these two holes on either side into plugs so I could hook up on either side. But if you guys remember back to the goal, I want this thing to be able to function off of like a 15 amp plug. So if I'm ever somewhere and all I can do is plug into a you know, outlet on the side of somebody's garage or their back porch, I want to be able to plug into that and have the solar and battery bank cover all my other core systems in the bus. So I'm not tied down trying to find a, a you know 50 or 30 amp RV hookup when I go places. So now that I got a bunch of this stuff in, I can kind of move forward on a lot more of the house systems. Because once that's done, I can get the wall in that kitchen finished up. Once that's set, the ceiling on that side gets finished. My kitchen cabinets can go in, and once the cabinets are in, that means I can finish out the other wall. So all this had to happen before I could really make progress everywhere else. So we're going to keep working through, and I'm probably going to end this video here because uh, I've got a bunch of customer work coming up the next couple days. It's going to probably be another three or four days before I get a chance to touch anything on this. But we'll keep going, and I'm hoping to get quite a bit done in the next couple weeks here. We're starting to get a bit of a gap in customer work, so I have time to mess with my stuff again.